Hello Netrunner fans, Willing Dunn here, and today we're going to discuss how to win the game as the corporation player. And we're also going to look at playing the right defense to match your strategy. This information applies primarily to deck building and hopefully will provide you with a type of guide when you're building your own corporation decks. In Netrunner, competitive decks have fallen into three major categories for their primary method of winning the game. The first is scoring four agendas, the second is scoring three agendas, and the final is flatlining the runner. First we're going to look at these in a little more detail, and then we're going to see if any patterns emerge in the types of defenses each category plays. Before we begin, I have a few general remarks about corporation deck building that will be relevant to this discussion. First is that most competitive decks have a backup plan to win the game. But as we'll see, your choice of a primary way to win informs lots of key decisions when it comes to defense. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the cards you put in your corporation deck affect the runner as well. The ice you play forms the board that will be the basis of interaction between you and the runner throughout the course of the game. The number of agendas that you need to win will be the number of agendas the runner needs to win as well. As the corporation player, we need to take advantage of the fact that we dictate these terms of engagement. The easiest way to do that is to understand how and when your deck wins the game. By far the most popular way to win the game in competitive Netrunner is scoring four agendas. This generally consists of scoring three two-point agendas and then a fourth agenda that is either worth two or one points. The primary reason for this method's popularity is the use of fast advance cards, such as Biotic Labor and San San City Grid. Fast advance is a catch-all term for cards that allow you to play and score an agenda all in one turn. Let's quickly look at how the two most popular fast advance cards work. Biotic Labor allows us to gain two clicks when we play it. So if we start with three clicks, we'll play it and be up to four clicks remaining. This allows us to install our agenda with three clicks left, advance with the three remaining clicks, and then score the agenda that turn. Instead of gaining you clicks, Sansan San City Grid reduces the cost to score the agenda, so we can play it on a server with Sansan San City Grid, res the City Grid, and then advance the agenda twice to score it. Since these powerful fast advance tools are in the factions of HB and NBN, the score four decks primarily are in these two factions, with NBN being the most popular since this agenda, Astroscript Pilot Program, is itself a fast advance card. The best thing about fast advance is that you can skimp on your remote server defense, since you can score your agendas without the use of passing the turn to the opponent. The second way to win by scoring is to score three agendas. Strategies that aim to score three agendas usually accomplish this by scoring either two two-point agendas and then a three-point agenda, or two three-point agendas and a one-point agenda. Despite the fact that we have to score fewer agendas, scoring three agendas is much more difficult than scoring four agendas. This is because large agendas like Priority Requisition require us to install them, advance, advance, pass the turn, hoping that it survives the runner's onslaught, and then we have to triple advance it on the next turn. And if we misjudge the runner's capability or the runner surprises us, we're potentially giving away three points to the runner. The flatline decks largely ignore the scoring aspect of the game and use the agendas more to further their flatline game plan. Every time the runner takes a point of damage, he or she has to discard a card at random. The runner is flatlined when he or she can't discard a card but is forced to from damage. For the flatline decks, the runner's point total is more of an indicator of how long they have to assemble their kill, but that doesn't mean that we have to ignore agendas altogether. We can still include quality agendas that we want to score for some benefit. Now that we've seen the three primary ways to win as corporation, let's look at how these three different strategies defend themselves. Since we're largely going to be fast advancing agendas, the score 4 decks can focus their defense on the central servers and timely remotes. We're going to try to score our 3 for 2 agendas whenever an opportunity presents itself. 
and we don't want to give the runner a lot of accesses because they'll steal the agendas that we want to score. For these reasons, the score four decks primarily play end the run ice, with our primary defensive gimmick being that we can put two different types of end the run ice on one server, forcing the runner to have a breaker of both types. Let's talk for a moment about the stage of the game at which this type of defense will be effective. By playing a lot of cheap and the run ice, we're trying to get out of the early game and into the mid game as quickly as possible. This deck tries to win somewhere in the gap between the mid and late game, where we have lots of ice of different types resed, but the runner doesn't have all of the icebreakers needed to break them. We can see, however, that once the runner has their rig assembled, our critical servers will be accessed for low numbers of credits. Of course, we're aiming to win the game long before that becomes a problem. So we've seen that playing a moderate number of ice and focusing on end the run ice will give us a pretty strong early game and mid game, but gives us a somewhat weak late game. This is the perfect defensive setup for a deck that aims to win the game as quickly as possible, such as the NBN deck we just looked at. But what if we're trying to play a longer game and trying to score three agendas? What type of defense should we play in that case? As we talked about earlier, scoring three point agendas is difficult. It generally involves setting up a remote server that the runner will be unable to penetrate for an entire turn. And since we need ice to defend both that remote and our central servers, we're going to have to play more defensive cards in our score 3 deck. At first glance, the ice of this deck might look similar to the NBN deck we were just looking at. In fact, both decks play a similar number of total ice, with the Jinteki deck having a more expensive set of ice that's less effective at ending the run. This is because the main objective of this ice is not to temporarily stop the runner, but to cost the runner a lot of money throughout the course of the game. This is best exemplified by the choice of the card Suruji. Why would we want to play this card over a card like Guard? If we just wanted to keep the runner out of our server, Guard costs 2 less to res, and it has the can't be bypassed effect. The big difference is that once the runner gets an icebreaker, Guard is probably going to be pretty cheap to break, whereas Suruji with the 4 subroutines is probably going to be harder to deal with. And since we're planning on taking a long time to win the game, it's worth it to spend those additional two credits to have an added cost for the runner. With the big disadvantage being that the higher res cost is going to make it more difficult to res in the early game. Another big point with this deck is that the defense doesn't stop at the ice. If we look at the agendas in this deck, we see that two of them are difficult to steal, where the other one has a powerful defensive effect when we score it. We also play these two upgrades to make it more difficult to steal on our remotes, and the ID itself helps protect our remotes. The whole plan of this deck is to defend, defend, defend while we grow our economy and then eventually score our big agendas. So now we've looked at the two ways to defend yourself if you're trying to score the seven points needed to win. We've seen a fast way to do it, and a slow way to do it, and we've seen the differences in the way that the ice are selected for these decks. But what if you're trying to flatline the runner? If we take a look at this deck, we see that there's no obvious scoring pattern in the agendas. Instead of being concerned with getting to 7 points, we've instead included agendas that are just good when they're scored. The biggest departure from the other two decks is the low ice count. We only play 10 ice in this deck, and none of them end the run. This is for two reasons. First of all, we're not terribly worried about the runner scoring agendas, since our goal isn't to get to 7 points ourselves. Second, the inclusion of trap assets makes the running of our servers dangerous. And for this reason, the ice we include only serves to make running more dangerous. Yagura, for example, isn't likely to kill the runner in one go, but it makes it really difficult for the runner to run R&D over and over and over. Well, I hope some of the advice in this video has got you thinking about how to match your way to win with your way to defend yourself. When you're making a new corporation deck, think about critical strategic decisions like, how do I win? How quickly will I win? And what stage of the game am I the weakest? And I hope this video has given you some tools to help answer these questions. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. 
If you liked it, please click subscribe and the like button, and I will see you next time.